All right, traders, welcome back and welcome to the second week of the boot camp. This is currently day eight of the boot camp. And, and what I must say is that if you're watching this video, now I know I basically weeded you out that you're serious about this and you want to learn this skill. And so starting day eight all the way through the next 10 days through day 18, every day is actual execution. It's talking about actual entry points. It's talking about marking up your charts. It's getting into the stuff that a lot of people really want to learn. We have to understand to get to this point, we need to know those fundamentals in which we talked about day one through seven. So for those of you guys that have been more intrigued in actually getting into the trading style, actually learning how I actually trade and, and how the rest of the corporate traders trade, now is the time. So now is the time that a lot of traders, this is the video a lot of traders are starting to look at. And obviously, once again, if you're watching this video, you definitely and, and, and anybody that's watching this video are my priority. You're the ones that are showing that you're serious about this. You've taken the time to get through the first seven videos, learn the basics, learn the fundamentals, understand what we overview and, and how we approach things. And now we'll get into the actual small technical uh, details of it. And uh, these videos are going to be much quicker. And these videos are going to be much more pinpointed. So you might enjoy the pace of it actually a little bit better. So understanding first that is is important but also understand that the success is now on you okay understand that these concepts can be talked about over and over and over again and, and really all I would have to do is just reiterate the points on charts on charts on charts and that gets kind of old to a point and obviously we'll do it to an extent but a lot of the success is now on you it's gonna be more difficult it's gonna be more more difficult to understand it's just gonna be more and diff, more difficult in general but understand that if you can if you take your time watch these and go and actually implement it it's gonna help you guys and so what I'm gonna leave you with is just that I don't do much motivation but a small little motivational section here there are two steps to success to start and to start doing every single one of you that's listening to this as we speak has already started you're here so now it's on you to start doing taking what you're about to learn and implementing and when you guys can implement and when you guys can actually get in and, and start to implement every little process, that is when your success will absolutely catapult. All right, so we're going to learn about structure today and, and, and really start to implement how to use structure for position taking and uh, actually get on MetaTrader 4, hop on the charts and show you a little bit about my approach to structure. Understand that this video is going to reiterate a lot of the points from the video where we talked about identifying structure, so don't forget that part. And basically, we're going to learn to use structure to set up a trade. And we're always going to keep in mind risk-reward. And um, so understand that structure-based trading is only one way to trade at all times. You know, a lot of traders think that structurally is, you know, structure trading and technical analysis based off structure is the only way to do things. The answer is no. We're teaching you this first because structure trading is actually what is basically the icing on the cake when it comes to sequential trading in which we'll learn all about the extension dip and things in the next couple of videos here. So I want to make sure that um, you know you guys have a good sound basis and, and, and really good fundamental sort of foundation for structure so that when we, we implement sequence we can utilize both of them. So today's video is going to be a lot less right here structurally on you know these slides, this PowerPoint, what have you, and more on the chart. But I do want to get through you know some of these slides real quick before we hit the charts. So here's an example of, of a, a picture that you guys have actually already seen. I'm not sure if you recall this, but this is an example of a picture that you guys have already seen in which you guys were learning in the previous videos how to mark support and resistance in which you remember that you were marking the lines with a simple horizontal tool and then you'd go through and color code them basically uh, off of how many hits were in each section, whether those were red or whether those were orange. And then you also implemented the trend lines and understood what trend direction it is. And so in this case, what you will see is that, uh, you know, this is a bullish trend. And, and, and we're going to talk about real-time opportunities here soon on MetaTrader 4. But what I'm going to talk about is a little bit more hindsight so you can kind of get the gist of it. And so at all times, really the important situation that uh, you guys will always be running into is trying to have something called confluence. And confluence is basically trying to put together a couple different reasons for entry all in the same price point. So that may be a, a trade on structure or a trade on resistance coupled with a trend coupled with a trend line. All right. And so this is just a quick example of me drawing a trend line. As you can see, this is our trend line here. 
and it goes all the way up same as this one just a little bit steeper all right and so what uh, you know the first thing we want to do when we start to mark up our charts and of course we'll get to MetaTrader 4 in this video but the first thing we want to do when we mark up our charts is find you know our origin point which is just gonna be where you're gonna start from and this is not there's no right or wrong answer here you're gonna to want to make sure that you have enough information in the market find the higher find the low recently so that you can really start to pick up the overall picture as I always say the key to success is zooming out at first zoom out zoom out zoom out and then scale it in and so in this example as you can see what we first did was draw the trend lines so once we drew these trend lines once we got these support and resistance areas what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the opportunities where you can find an area of support coupled with a trend line and you're trying your best to do that and so in this example in this case what we did was was I left out uh, this this area here and so I'm gonna draw this in for you guys and show you guys what my thought process would have been so as you can see this area right here had major major rejections and I and and, and what these rejections were as you can see in this case was a was a massive massive wick to the upside before it came down and rejected did another smaller wick right here so two rejections one and two as you can see consistently and so with these rejections and with these areas we can start to define in this general zone that this is a level of resistance okay and this is a level of resistance specifically right in here and right in here and so when this market comes back down notice that we would have a level of resistance right here this market comes back down and what do we notice right away this trend line here's our first hit I actually put zero here's our first hit here's our second hit right here's our third hit we have a trend line bounce we also have a structure bounce right here okay this is our structure bounce all right so your goal is to to put these two things together to start to build a case for entry all right and so in structural based trading and, and really with our, our actual entries we'll be basing off of sequences but in structural based trading when you're dissecting and analyzing this decision you're deciding yourself should I take this trade based off of these two rejection zones because we've come back down into the support level look left and see what happens we see that we're bouncing here what you want to do is you want to figure out you know where's the recent lows down into here and where's the, the recent highs up into here and you always want to pay attention to that why because you're looking at your risk versus your reward in this case in this picture would you say we're trying to get long obviously we're in a bullish market we're buying off the of support we're buying off of a supported trend line would you say that the risk reward is at least a one to two like we talked about way 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 back would you say that as you can see visually no and so this trade here is a wash but the idea of the trade is there okay and so as you can see in this case I just want to show you the hindsight when we get into real time what you're starting to see now in real time is that the market's starting to reject off of these levels the market's starting to reject off of this trend line and so the closer you can get to this trend line with a level the better and you're trying to couple these together and you're always targeting a previous structure level and your stops are always below a previous structure level over and over and over again and this is just very vague because we have full segments on actually entering and stop loss levels and things from sequence uh, but I want to make sure that you guys understand how we would do that so if we come over here again another picture and we take a look at you know how we drew this here is a great example of a trade setup okay here's a great example of some trade setups so we first did our horizontal tool okay we find these levels in here and what I'm paying attention to is drawing this trend line starting here here's our second and then boom I just draw it right across I notice to myself that I do have on the left side this is a level of support the market crosses right through it and retests up into it while also rejecting off of a stop level so if you see both of those what do you say to yourself it has some market confluence you're starting to look for entries 
And so you'll start to look for entries off of this area based just off structure. Then what you'll do is add on what we will learn in the next couple of videos as well. But what we first have to do is look at the risk reward. If we were supposed to just let's say we're going to short it right off of this level. Okay, stop at this previous level, target at this previous level. You can see visually that your stop is less than your target, meaning your risk reward is getting much better. So opportunities are starting to really start to show. This is an opportunity to take. Same goes as follows all the way down, and you can see a lot of these chances here happening. Okay and a lot of these chances happening over and over in these areas off of these rejections. So what you're trying to do from an abstract point of view is you're trying to identify to yourself when you have these trend lines here, okay, obviously I'm just drawing, when we have these trend lines, when we have these rejections, you're trying to identify to yourself where the opportunities are sitting. Okay, over and over and over again, you'll be able to draw out these trend lines, but also draw out these support levels. Big support turned resistance levels. And you're trying to find these over and over and over again. X marks the spot. You're just trying to collect the areas. And so mark this up. Don't be lazy. This is here for a reason. Mark this chart up. Mark how this is. Mark these levels so that you can see, you know, where you would have looked to trade and bring them all the way across. There's plenty of opportunities and I drew it on purpose. Not exactly perfect because guess what? The market will never be perfect. You're never going to have support turn resistance to the pip. It's going to reject into areas. It's going to validate a little, invalidate a little bit. It's going to cause you some trouble. Okay, so just the idea behind it is important that you understand this. Okay, so mark this up and now for the good part. Let's, uh, let's hop over to the charts. So I'll see you guys on the charts. All right, guys, so I'm back here on the charts, and now this is real time. This is real data. This is, you know, marking the charts now. Now, first thing I want to do is just make sure that, uh, you know, everybody's on the right page and, and everybody's with me here. So when we when we pop into this at, at first, what I want you to, to pay attention to is that we, we have a couple EMAs. So I want to make sure everybody's on the same track with my EMAs. Now, what I use my EMAs for are very simple. I don't use them for entries. I don't use them for stop loss or targets. I just use them as moving support and resistance. So in the areas where we have multiple EMAs, the market likes to reject off of them. So I like to keep these EMAs. So if you want to copy what I have, we already did the template once, but if you want to copy the EMAs, I have five of them. I'll open each of them up real quick. And how you add an EMA is just simply going over here to your navigator and adding your moving averages under your uh, indicators under trend. If you open trend, you'll see moving averages. And so the five colors that I have, I'll start at the top here. The first one is a five period exponential close yellow. Okay, the period is five exponential close yellow. All of them will be exponential close. The only thing that will change is the color and the period. So the yellow is five. Okay, the 13 is red exponential close. The 50 is aqua. The white is 200. And the navy is 800. Now, obviously, you guys can keep whatever colors you want. These are the colors that I use. Um, but these are not going to be used any further than simple support and resistance. So I'm going to show you guys my thought process behind trading a little bit now. And really, as you can see, I zoom in until I can see a recent peak. And so we're going to start our analysis from here. And basically, if I could draw a vertical line, you know, we're not really going to pay much attention um, past that point uh, too much. So we're going to really pay mostly attention to everything in this side, maybe a little bit here, but really paying attention to what's at the screen here. And so the first thing I want to do is just identify, you know, where my origin is, which is up here. And so the first thing I do always is get my horizontal line tool out and I start to mark up my chart. And so as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm moving down the peaks. The first thing I do is I move down, then I'll move back up. So I'm moving down the peaks. So peak, 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 and peak, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll go up, 
And what I mean by up is I'll go valley here, valley here, and, and so on and so forth, okay? So I'm just picking these valleys, and I'm not getting too intricate. Once again, that's the worst part of, of people's trading. They get too intricate. Now, once I have these levels, as you guys know, I like to color code them. Two hits or more gets red. One hit gets orange. Okay? And so what I'm doing right now is I'm just coloring them all. So don't worry about the color yet. What I do is I just color them all. And why I color them all is just, I'll just backtrack. It's just for the sake of time and speed. Because when you're marking up your charts, you don't want to spend all day on the charts. You want to make sure that you can mark up in a timely fashion. And so I start to mark these levels. And these levels are only for me to look for confluence. I'm not trading off of them. As you can see, a lot of these levels, if you look really far left here, they're bouncing as well, so they're important. So this is a really big one for me. This middle one is definitely red. All right, that middle one's definitely red, and this guy's definitely orange. So then what I do after I just mark all my lines, as you can see, I'm not really that, I'm not as intricate as people might expect. I just like to open it up and, and visualize things. Once I've done so, what I do is I'll go to the bottom, and I'll just work my way to the top. This first one I see it hits once, so I'm going to switch it to orange. Okay. The second one I see it hits once, so I'm going to switch this one to orange. The third one, as I talked about, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, we're obviously red. This one is more than three times more than three times as well. This one is actually looks to be only about once, so I'll switch this one to orange. up here once these top two look orange as well. So as you can see in the middle there is, is kind of where our, our zone is, where is more price. All right. And then the second thing I want to do is I want to first look at with trend, tra trend lines, with trend, trend lines first. What is my trend right now? My trend is clearly going down. So the first thing I'm going to do is look with, with trend and, and we're trading with the trend on these trend lines at first. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll wick to wick the trend line here. So I have it. Okay, that's with trend. And then from my peak here, I'll start to wick these as well. Okay. And as you can see, there's, there's a plethora of, of chances for me to do this. And this is where people struggle because they don't know how far to do it. So really, I'm actually just going to overlap that. I'm just going to leave that as one line. It's really all I see that I like. And then what I do is I do counter trend trend lines. Okay? Counter trend trend lines. And so the first one that I that I really see is right here. Okay. And what I'm doing with these counter trend trend lines is I'm just I'm just making sure that I can see, and these ones actually are use. This one's probably not as use, useful as I would expect, uh, but I'm just seeing what the market is breaking, what it's giving me. As you can see, current market price in this pair is getting a little more chunked up here, and I'll also just mark a couple of these. And as you can see, for the sake of time, what do I mark up? I mark up typically more so around where current price is because that's where the money's at. So now that I've marked up a couple lines, I have my support, I have my resistance. It's color coded. I know the trend is bearish. If I know the trend is bearish, I will typically be looking only to short at any time. And so once again, this is only based off structure. So the hard part about this is that we actually will not be trading ever solely based off structure. But these are really good opportunities to find because then if you can find a sequence off of it, it's game over. And so what I notice where was the strongest support or resistant level? It was this one in the middle. The market came down, held, 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 rejected through, or it broke through, and then it rejected. This trend line came up, and it rejected. This trend line came down, and it's now rejected. Where do you think I'm looking at taking a potential trade? Right here current money current money and so in this area is where I'm looking at 
And so then what you do, very simple, we see the rejection, we've started to see it, is you're looking at your entry zones on these rejection levels, current price with stops above these market highs with targets into the next level of structure. Currently your stop would be about one to one, so you'd probably want to wait or you'd want to target deeper structure levels, which is this one is, is further down. Okay, So as you can see, when I mark it, I'm marking first the, the support and resistance lines, and I'm color coding it, then I'm looking at the trend lines, and this is all I'm bringing together in, in the structure. From there, we will add on sequence, in which actually that's what we'll do in tomorrow's video. So you're going to be adding on sequence so that you can then understand what the market's doing and how it's doing it. So sequence is, is of the utmost importance. And so what we'll do with sequence is, is we'll actually talk about you know how this pair in particular, shorting out, we can pay attention to sequence in this exact pair. And this is going to help us to understand what we're doing in the current market. So I marked this one up today with intention of tomorrow's video to continue to mark it up so you can kind of see what we're talking about and what we're doing. Okay, and so once again, to recap, what you're trying to do is utilize what you just talked, what we talked about back in, in the, the basic area videos, and talk about that support and resistance. And you're really trying to take advantage of, you know, your skill set now. So you're starting to color code it. You're starting to get a couple trend lines together, and then we're starting to add other things. So we'll start adding Fibonacci extensions and retracements, and then you're going to really have your reasons for entry. We'll have an, we'll have an exact entry. We'll have an exact stop will have an exact target and you're really going to start to understand how to put these things together. So this was basically step one of your check down analysis, your chart analysis process. So I'll see you guys back here in day nine for some sequence.